What is up folks, SolarStrike here, and today we are here to cover the development of Windows 2000 once again. In this part, we'll be covering the builds released after the final name of the operating system was revealed in October 1998. Here's a recap for those that did not see that first part. Windows 2000 began its life as Windows NT 5.0 in late 1996, slated for release in late 1997. Unfortunately, due to feature creep, Microsoft's focus on Windows 98 early on in NT 5.0's development, and other unexpected factors, the release date was gradually pushed back to 1999, over two years after it was scheduled to release. Luckily, things began to pick up after the release of Beta 2 in September 1998, and just a month later, the final name for the operating system was revealed to be Windows 2000. That leads us right into build 1946, compiled in December 1998. By this point, much of the rebranding from NT 5.0 to 2000 had taken place. Also introduced here were a new startup and shutdown sound. You can also notice around the desktop that new icons are being introduced a process which finished in build 1965. By now, the operating system is looking very much like the final release, though some elements weren't quite the same just yet, most prominently the startup and shutdown screens looking a little different from the final release. Build 1983 in February 1999 marks another update to the setup and shutdown sounds after just a few builds. Now getting very close to the final version. In addition, a new boot screen has been added. By now, it was clear Windows 2000 was going to launch in 1999, and progress was moving very quickly, with Beta 3 expected in April, and the release candidates that summer for an expected fall shipping date. Confidence at Microsoft and other Windows fan sites, such as the then recently released Windows 2000 Super site, remained high. The next build was build 2000.3. Changes by this point include a new background for Winver, removing the beta 3 text and color boxes in the bar, along with some stability enhancements in the Explorer. A build number watermark was also added when a user starts up the system. In addition, a new default active desktop background was implemented, resembling the final branding. This was a milestone for the Windows team, if only for the fact that the build number was now 2000, oddly fitting for this operating system. Going off the side ramble now, Beta 3 finally released on April 26, 1999 as build 2031. While changes remained minimal as the operating system was close to feature completeness and very much resembled the final version, there was one major change. The startup and shutdown sounds were changed yet again to the final sounds. It seemed Windows 2000 had finally found its footing after nearly three years, and release looked imminent, so much so that Microsoft decided to start work on new versions of Windows by then. This optimism continued into release candidate 1's release in June 1999, with RC2 hopefully not too far behind. As is expected behavior for release candidate builds, feature changes by this point remained minimal as the team was focused on fixing bugs by this point. However, time marched on into July, then August, and then September, before RC2 finally hit that month as build 2128. Changes by this point include a new booting bar before the startup, replacing the old OS loader, as well as getting rid of the writing to disk window in the shutdown sequence. However, remember when I said NT was compatible for a while on other platforms like the DEC Alpha line of CPUs? 
Well, due to politics regarding Alpha's support being suddenly terminated by Compaq in mid-1999, their new owners, DEC Alpha support for Windows 2000 was dropped at the last minute by Microsoft, with RC2 being the final Alpha compatible build. It's a real shame support for Windows NT whittled down to just x86 at the end of 2000's development when NT 4.0 supported many more platforms, but the x86 platform is Microsoft's bread and butter after all. The last minute shortcomings continued at Microsoft as resources were being spread thin across the company on other projects, like Millennium Edition and the next NT releases, and in fact one of 2000's SKUs would come out after the initial release. It was unclear if the product would still ship in 1999, Though things picked up with RC3's release as build 2183 in November 1999. By this point, very few things separate this build from the final release. And in fact, by this point, even the setup now requests for keys to be added. Finally, on December 8th, 1999, the release to manufacturing build of Windows 2000, build 2195, was built. A week later, on Wednesday, December 15th, 1999, the RTM status was confirmed by Microsoft and copies began to ship nationwide. And some businesses already started using the OS that month. Windows 2000 officially released the stores on Thursday, February 17th, 2000. While the launch of Windows 2000 was regarded as lackluster by journalists of the day, it was regarded as a rock-solid operating system for its time that made it a big hit in professional spaces and even home users who flocked to the operating system after the failure of Windows Millennium Edition in September 2000, despite not being designed as a home operating system. A 64-bit version of Windows 2000 for Itanium CPUs was also planned, but was delayed to 2001 with Windows XP instead. Service for Windows 2000 ended in July 2010 after 10 years of support. And despite some major security exploits later in its lifespan, it remained a very stable version of Windows. It's fair to say that 2000 is an unsung hero of Windows history.